this is Jackie from Bronx Bobbles and today I'm on the top of my New York City apartment rooftop and if you're wondering why I'm here today it's because I've been inspired by the most phenomenal jewelry designer of the century Miss Elsa Peretti of Tiffany and Halston fame now back in 1975 a very famous photographer named Helmut Newton took a photograph of Miss Elsa Peretti up on her New York City apartment rooftop and she was wearing this phenomenal bunny costume with uh, the fishnet stockings that had holes in them and she had bunny ears too and she looked amazing and it's such an inspirational photograph of a woman that would eventually turn into the greatest jewelry designer of the century. So I decided why not give it a try? So that's why I'm up on my rooftop and it's such an unusual space and I kind of like it up here actually. So let's just get started. I recently saw the Halston Netflix series called Halston and I really started getting interested in Elsa Peretti after seeing that video. And then subsequently after that I found out that Miss Peretti recently passed in March of 2021. And so I thought, what a fitting tribute to an amazing woman who contributed so much to jewelry design and just female empowerment in general. She was born in 1940 in Florence, Italy, and she was a fierce, determined woman who, at the age of 18, decided to leave a very strict upbringing family and moved to Florence, Italy. And from there, she traveled the world to Japan and other um, European cities, including France, and subsequently ended up in New York City in 1968, in the height of what would turn out to be the era of Studio 54, with some amazing, phenomenal artists of the time, such as Liza Minnelli, Halston. One of her most famous designs that she initially uh, designed for was for Halston. And he asked her to create a packaging for his perfume and other accessories um, that when you see it, you know that it's a Halston piece. And she did just that by designing this amazing, beautiful bottle. This is the Halston perfume. Um, and she did this bottle based on a perfume bottle that she bought when she was much younger. Uh, beautiful ladies would carry these uh, gardenias in their hands and she realized that by the end of the night they would die. So she created a, a cigarette bottle um, and she wrapped it around her neck and she put her little gardenia in there. She also created the packaging. This is not an actual Halston uh, packaging. What this is is a lacquered Japanese box and she was heavily influenced by lacquered Japanese artists and work and she did bracelets that were incredible and what was phenomenal about those bracelets was that although it looked cheap it was complicated and difficult to make and she liked things that looked cheap but were really expensive um, and the reason why it was expensive is because the lacquer on the Japanese piece to artisans to create and they would layer upon layer upon layer until they came out with these lacquered pieces that are very similar to this box but in a bracelet form in a cinnabar color black even this off-white creamy color you see them the gorgeous 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 bracelets they almost remind me of the cinnabar bracelets that i have that were chinese influence they also have a korean version so there's different lacquer techniques for the different um, Asian countries but the one that she really was attracted to was the Japanese. This is a Japanese box that was very very similar to the Halston packaging that she created and if you see the Netflix movies you'll see this design featured in different parts of the movies. Most of the time inside instead of having uh, powder, talcum powder for your body it was covered in cocaine. But that was the 70s and that was Studio 54. From the cigarette pendant necklace that Elsa created, she created another beautiful bottled necklace that was very, very highly coveted in the Tiffany catalog. And what I'm doing here is basically taking Elsa Peretti's influences and styles and finding in my own collections 
pieces that have that Elsa Peretti influence. It's a huge pocket to be able to buy the most beautiful pieces that Elsa Peretti has. And trust me, if I had the money, I most certainly would because they are timeless. But what I do have is the ability to buy pieces that have her influence that I can use as inspiration for me. And so this bottled cat, that kind of reminds me of the Tiffany necklaces that she created. Um, and so if you look at the back, the back of this cat piece is exactly almost like her design. But for me, it's even more special because it's a kitty cat. And you'll see this piece also in, in one of my other very recent videos called Aromatic Perfume Necklaces. So check that video out too. Although Elsa Peretti's pieces are very, very expensive, she really tried to create pieces that the everyday person could create. And so she created this piece called Diamonds by the Yard for Tiffany. And what it was is she created these necklaces that you could put little diamond chips all the way up to one carat diamonds. And you can buy them by the inch or by the foot. And so depending on your price point, you can go with a very tiny chip of a necklace that was featured in Tiffany for $89. That's a price that almost anybody could up to thousands and thousands of dollars and so they were very very um, desirable people love them and they still collect them to this day and so um, that was Elsa's way of trying to get all peoples of different price points to be able to purchase some of her pieces and so I got my diamonds by the yard this here is a Swarovski um, necklace from the 80s this is something that I purchased at the thrift store for under $10. And you too could probably go ahead and try to find yourself a Diamonds by the Yard that was inspired by Miss Fabulous Elsa Peretti. What's phenomenal about the wrist bracelet is that this is a bracelet that is still popular to this day. It's bracelets that, depending on which side you buy, you can buy the right side or the left side. And it's based on the wrist bone of your wrist and that piece is actually featured in Wonder Woman 1984 movie because it was the 50th version, the 50th anniversary of that design. Pulling out my Wonder Woman bangles and wearing them in homage to Miss Elsa Peretti because if you look at the design of Elsa Peretti's bangles, they almost have that Wonder Woman feel. And so here are my Wonder Woman cuffs. I loved, loved, loved Wonder Woman as a little girl. And um, it had a lot to do with the fact that she was strong, beautiful, sexy. I mean, Linda Carter was rocking it. She was so stunning with that dark, dark hair and that beautiful skin and her eyes and she was strong and she was fierce and she was just magnificent and I wanted to be Wonder Woman and then I find out that Miss Linda Carter has Mexican heritage into her so as a young Latina girl that meant everything to me so here I am wearing my Wonder Woman cuffs in homage to Miss Elsa Peretti whose 50th anniversary cuffs were featured in a Wonder Woman movie of 1984. I also pulled out this cuff. And what I love about this cuff was it has that feature that I told you about with the um, wrist bone protruding out of, out of the, the cuff. This pin up and it has a stopper. And this cuff is made by Mignon Fagat. I'm not sure if I'm saying that right. And you have to make sure you put that cuff right where your bone is. This is a bracelet that I purchased at the thrift store for a relatively cheap price and um, I don't, I believe it's a designer piece and I'm not sure what it's worth but if I can purchase this at the thrift store for under ten dollars you can go out there and find yourself an Elsa Peretti a cuff bracelet influenced by her most, one of her most iconic famous designs. Another one of Elsa Peretti's famous designs is this incredibly gorgeous. Now, if I 
at my dreaders of any piece of Elsa Peretti to buy, it would probably be her mesh necklace. And I just think it's just, it's almost like a scarf more than it is a necklace, but it's just incredibly beautifully done and worth thousands of dollars. Now, when Elsa Peretti fell in love with these mesh purses that were antiques. And here's an example of that mesh purse. This mesh purse here is by Whiting and Davis and it was probably done in the early 1900s. Um, and this purse was very, very popular in the 1920s especially, 1910, 1920s. And she just loved the way this mesh was almost very um, done in a very silk-like fashion. When you wrap it around your neck, it just go, it's very slinky and it undulates and it just looks phenomenal. And she wanted to create a design that, that was similar to these purses. However, they weren't making those purses anymore. So her designer friends um, sourced out the machines that these purses were originally made from. And those machines hadn't been touched in almost 90 years. And so they finally found this 80 something year old man who as a little boy helped out making these uh, uh, purses. And with that, she was able to create the mesh necklaces that she had. So here is a beautiful mesh purse that was influenced Miss Elsa Peretti in creating her very famous mesh scarf necklace design. And to me, I just love it. It's just so beautiful that one day I hope to own something like that. Here is mesh necklace that was very super popular in the 70s in the disco studio 54 jet set that Elsa Purdy was a part of and it has that silky sleeky look this one is a no-name brand that you too can source on your own when you go on to your you know um, yard sales or thrift store store jaunts or whatever and look it's just so beautiful Elsa Peretti was inspired by jewelry that was organic and that was rooted in nature and she had this phenomenal uh, rattlesnake ne necklace that she created based on a rattlesnake that was given to her and the rattlesnake sort of um, signified good luck for her perhaps not for the rattlesnake but for her it did and she created these snake necklaces out of that design and so because her design was clean and smooth and that was not superfluous at all. It is what it, it was. It was just sleek and, and simple. And so I thought perhaps this snake necklace would be a great inspiration. What I love about this necklace is that it's so simple. It's just brass wire that has a little bigger part for the head and a smaller part for the tail. I can see someone working this necklace on the top of a turtleneck or just an open blouse. So sort of the same design as as the other um, slinky mesh necklace. I thought maybe something like this is also inspired by Elsa Peretti. It's again a very simple design and she loved her organics. Um, natural motifs, in this case, the snake, and look how slinky this is. This is as slinky, slinky as her mesh necklace, but also with the fabulous design of her rattlesnake necklace. I think I'm just gonna keep it on. It looks fabulous and it feels so wonderful. So here's another Elsa Peretti, and I recently bought this at the thrift store for about $4.99. So this is a great way to get a fabulous design that's inspired by phenomenal great design. Another famous design that Elsa Peretti toyed with was the whole bean necklace. She created these bean uh, design and she felt like the bean is the start of a life. You plant the bean and in, from that bean you grow a mighty tree. And so um, I thought about, um, I have several bean necklaces, but I wanted to do something just a little bit different. Um, because she was uh, also inspired by nature, I thought a necklace like this would be something that I can totally see Elsa Peretti wear and create. Um, it has almost a bean quality to it, but it's made from this beautiful wood that um, has this warm texture and warm um, look to it. And 
I think that she would have loved to have either created something like this or worn something like this. And to me, this is something that is inspired by an Elsa Peretti design. The last accessory that I want to show you that's inspired by Elsa Peretti is a Cult Gaia. And this is just a phenomenal, phenomenal piece that I absolutely love. I love for its color, I love for its design, and it's completely, utterly influenced by Elsa Peretti. And it's this green purse. This green purse, this is such an Elsa Peretti design. It, the coloration of this is just beautiful. It's, it's phenomenal. It's this um, hunter green, marbleized, lucite um, purse that when Elsa created the design for purses very similar to this, that she created in silver and in gold, and I believe she might even have some wooden um, versions of it, but this is a lucite version. And what she said was she wanted to create a purse that when a woman grabs it with her hands, it kind of has the ergonomic feel uh, to it so that it's easy for them to hold it. Now, this is probably an oversized version. Her versions would be a lot smaller and a lot easier to hold on to when you open it. It has this phenomenal strap to it that, just look at this. And if you choose to, and what I really, really love about this is that you can detach the straps and wear it as a necklace so that you have this coordinated look about you. I just think this is phenomenal. It's one of my favorite purses. Pieces that are influenced by Elsa Peretti are these pieces here. Now this is a Lucky Brand uh, bracelet that has almost a branch effect from a tree. And I believe that Elsa Peretti and her influence by organic and natural things would totally dig something like this. And here is another bracelet that was given to me by a friend and this sort of reminds me of the bones that was that influenced um, Elsa Peretti. She loved bones and when she was a little girl she would go into the churches that were decorated in human remains like the catacombs of Rome and she would steal little bones and put them in her pocket as a little girl and when she got home her mother would send her back to replace the bones in the church. And so that forever remained a major memory and influence in her mind. And so later on, she created these phenomenal pieces that were um, accessories like candlesticks made of a human femur as an example. So that, my friends, is costume jewelry in my personal collection that was inspired by the styles of Miss Elsa Peretti. And it didn't only stop with the costume this jewelry, it also influenced some of my purchases of accessories as well. And so I hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I did learning about Miss Elsa Peretti. And so you too can go out there and find yourself some influences and you let me know which was your favorite. I always love to hear what people think are their favorites. And I also want to thank you for putting up with some of the noises that are just typical New York City sounds. And I like to show you around at uh, my rooftop so you can see what it's like on a New York City rooftop. And if you like what you saw, please hit the like button. Forward me to some friends that you uh, think might be interested in learning about stories and history and influences and styles uh, when it comes to costume jewelry and fashion and accessories. And if you like to leave me a comment, I read all my comments and I answer each and every one of them. It's my favorite part of, uh, of doing these videos. And also, last but certainly not least, hit the subscription button and show me a little love. With that, my friends, I'll show you around and I hope that you like. Ciao!